GH is secreted, uh, controlled by somatostatin. So there are somatostatin is a molecule that is produced in the hypothalamus that is above the pituitary. So there are many drugs that are called somatostatin receptor ligands. So these drugs act like they were somatostatin, so they block GH secretion and they are able to control the size of the tumor or even decrease the tumor. So this is a class of drugs that we call first generation somatostatin receptor ligands or agonists. So the ones that we use uh, now is octreotide LAR and lonreotide autogel. Both in Brazil, in the US, uh, there is also oral octreotide. So, but in the vast majority of the world is octreotide LAR and lonreotide autogel that are what we call SST2 agonists. So these drugs will block GH secretion and control the tumor. The problem of these drugs is that they are injectable and they are painful. The patient has to go to the healthcare unit every month to get the shot because this is not a simple shot. So it has to be done by a specialized healthcare profession. At the end of the period of the injection, some patients before the next one uh, complains about some relapse of some symptoms as headache is very uh, common. And there is a very nice French study that showed that IGF-1 is not stable with the injections during the whole month. So we have all these problems with injections. And the problem with acromegalis is that these patients will have to take this kind of medications probably for the rest of their life. So 20, 30, 40 years. If the, the problem, if they needed uh, these drugs for only like six months, that's okay. That they had to go to the hospital for six months, but it's for the rest of the life. So a oral drug that they can take at home is very expected by the patients. And paltusotin is an oral medication that binds to this same receptor that is called SST2. And an important difference from the other oral, that's oral octreotin, that was launched in US, is that the oral octreotide has to be taken twice a day. And this is complicated because we know that the second pill, many patients forget. The one in the morning when the pa patient has to take, as, since, as soon as when the patient wakes up, it's okay. But the second one, sometimes the patient is at the dinner, out of the house or at the work, so it's more complicated. And the, the oral octreotide needs fasting. So a second fasting is difficult. So paltusotin is once daily, oral, and very stable drug. So in terms of, uh, I would say, posology is very convenient for the patient. And regarding efficacy, we had good data in the phase two, but now uh, the phase, the first phase three, that's Pathfinder one, uh, was finished, and the efficacy was demonstrated because in this trial we included the controlled patients on octreotide or lonreotide. I mean the patients had normal IGF-1 on one of the injectable medications, and they were randomized to receive paltusotin or placebo. 
So 30 to paltuzotin and 28 to placebo. And they were treated with paltuzotin for 36 weeks. And at the end of this core phase of the study, uh, it was compared at the percentage of patients that maintained control of IGF-1 in the paltuzotin group and on the placebo group. And the difference was huge as expected. So it was 83% in the paltuzotin and 4% in the placebo. So the study met its primary endpoint. Additionally, there is an evaluation of the symptoms of the patient through acromegaly symptoms diary. And again, the, the paltuzotin maintain the control of the symptoms of the patients. So biochemically effective, maintain the symptoms. In terms of tumor, there were no tumor increase. So tumor was stable. Then regarding safety, we only saw side effects very typical or of acromegaly or with the class of the drug. That is the first generation somatostatin receptor ligands. So I mean, abdominal pain, nausea, diarrhea, that's associated with octreotide, lonreotide, paltuzotin, all these drugs. And some arthralgia and red ache that's associated more with acromegaly. So I think that the drug uh, is efficacy, has efficacy very close to the injectables one and is safe. But the, for me, the most interesting thing is that uh, during the study, I was telling other investigations and people that I was very impressed with the patients because the patients, before having an oral option, I, being very honest, I didn't know how bad was the injections because we only had that. So we scheduled the patient, so please come to the hospital this day to get your shot and we see you three months in the outpatient clinic. We didn't know how bad was the injection. It hurts, it's painful, has the patient lost half day of work to go to the hospital. So when we start an oral drug, the patients were so happy saying that, oh my God, we wanna stay in this drug. So please, this is much better. I feel much better. So we started to see that patients feel better because of not having the injection and also more stable throughout the month. So this was first told uh, us physicians by the nurses actually. So the nurses uh, came to me to say that. So I uh, started asking the patients about this and actually I was a kind of surprised. I, I knew that an oral drug would be a good option. But I didn't expect that the patients would be so happy as they are now. 